That was cool again. Smell that didn't work again. That is giving us a lot of gloom into the highlights. Yo, what's up? My friends over at Nisi Filters recently sent over a collection of their mist filters. And I've been using them for video work for the longest time, especially when shooting commercial or beauty work, because it really gives your footage that dreamy look and the highlights look really gloomy and cool. And I also recently did a photo shoot on my channel and there's a full behind the scenes on here. So if you wanna check it out, do it right now. And that got me thinking, why do I never use filters when shooting stilts and only when shooting video? So I really wanted to test out if mist filters when shooting stilts actually also enhance your image and if that is a cool look that I can't recreate in post. So this is what we are doing today. I took Bell, I took Franco, we went out and we actually tested this out. So in this video, I will be just testing these mist filters by Nisi with my EOS R5, I'm shooting on a 50mm right now, but I'm also probably shooting with a 35mm later. And then we'll see if the results are actually pretty cool and if I'll be using them from now on with photography as well. I'll also do some with and without comparisons. So let's actually start. Since I want to get the biggest results that I can see, I'm using the strongest Nisi filter that I currently have, and that is a one quarter. And we'll be using this with a 50 millimeter to start our shoot tonight. Yes, that is giving us a lot of gloom into the highlights. I do really like it, but we are losing dynamic range, that's for sure. I also want to say that it might actually has a hard time finding the focus compared to not having a filter on it, but I'll be checking that out later. So one thing I kind of noticed is that I feel the autofocus just gets worse when shooting with these filters. And I think there's so much light coming in, especially when shooting backlit, that it just kind of interrupts the autofocus. Maybe that is just something that I imagined, but overall I felt like the camera had a bigger problem of finding the focus when these were attached versus when they weren't attached. So when shooting directly against the sun, I almost think that one quarter is a little bit too gloomy. So let's try the other way around and like these. she likes these and shoot with the sun in our back. Feels better with the hair if we do it from the other side. Okay, let's do it from the other side again. I like these with the glow. Oh, now the sun is coming. Oh, yes. All right, now we actually have a lot of gloom. So before it was with the filter, now we're doing the same thing without the filter. Can I see something? Yes. All right, so there's definitely a big difference. But on these, I really think that I like the mist better. Let's go down to the field thingies? Yes. Right. Okay, I actually think the sun is too low for this spot now. Because it just looks like this. <laughs> what was that laugh? Franco? Uh, yes. Yeah. 
Yes, that looks good because now the rest of the sunlight is hitting your face. That looks good. Yes, I like that. Oh, that looks cool. Now, um, let's go on the other side and try the other way around because then we can play with angles a little. Do it again. No, that didn't work. Again. I mean, yeah, you can. Yeah, that's good. I actually like that one. Looking back at the pictures later, I definitely saw that there's a huge difference when you do have light, especially when you're seen as backlit. You can definitely see a big difference. But what if you don't have that much light and you're mostly shooting in a shadow side or if the light hits your model instead of being behind your model? So, the less light we have, the less pronounced the effect of the mist filter is. So we need to find ourselves a little bit more sun as much as it is left right now. So we need to get higher up. So now that there's not that much light left anymore, I want to do a comparison again between the quarter mist and no mist at all to see if it still makes a difference when shooting with hardly any light. So judging from this on my camera screen, I can tell no difference between the mist and no mist. So with no glooming lights in the back or no sunset, you can hardly tell the difference between the mist and the no mist. In a lot of these shots, I could hardly tell a difference if I could tell any at all. So you definitely do need some highlights in your shot to make use of these mist filters. All right, so I'm quickly changing to the 35 millimeter, but still using the same quarter inch, it's not a quarter inch, but I'm still using the same quarter black mist filter with a step up ring because we do have a little bit of light here glooming in the background. So shooting in that direction, it really didn't make a difference. Shooting in the other direction, it does make a difference again. So I think we have a lot, it's freezing and I think we're going to wrap it up right here. Maybe when the sun has finally set, we are trying to get a little bit of urban lights because that could be pretty cool with the mist filters as well. So let's check that out. Since the sun that day left us quickly, we also wanted to test it out with artificial light. So we went into the city and just did some night portrait shots. And there were a lot of different available lights just right on that shopping street. So we could actually see what these do with artificial lighting. After we had dinner, we really wanted to get a different kind of scenery because we only recorded everything in sunrise. So now we want to see what these filters look like in an artificial light setting. So now the sun is set, we are in the center of Vienna and now we're going to shoot some pictures. It's freezing, so we need to hurry up. But let's see what that looks like. So right off the bat we can see that there's a lot of gloom with these lights in the back. So now just for comparison I'm going to unscrew the filter and see what it looks like without any filter at all. Yeah, this is a complete different look. And I have to say, just looking at my screen here, I do prefer the mist. Uh, can you do this, the pose that you do a lot? And again, you could definitely see a huge difference. Everything gets really gloomy and the highlights, they're just all over the place. And there's definitely a style to it and it's subjective if you do like it or not. I do like it for certain shots, but it's definitely very stylistic and you can't use it for everything. Another thing to note is due to the extra glass, I feel like we get way more lens reflections in there, which usually I really do like. 
They're not the prettiest ones, I feel, but I have to look at it on my computer later. It's a wrap. Uh, for tonight it is. I think we got enough pictures to get an educated guess. <laughs> to make an informed decision of what we think of these filters for photography. And then tomorrow I'll talk to you in the studio. So what's my overall verdict of using mist filters in stills photography? It definitely does give your overall images a whole different look to it. It obviously doesn't work in all cases, but when shooting portraits, especially in a moody, kind of dreamy sunset setting, it definitely does enhance your pictures and you can definitely use them. So I will actually use them from now on in some of these settings because I really did like the results. Same also goes for night shoots, especially with a lot of artificial light and if you want to get this let's say cinematic feeling to your portraits I also think that mist filters could enhance your pictures you do lose a bit of contrast when shooting but you can definitely just gain that back in post when editing those pictures so overall again it's a stylistic look that you really have to like but if you do then from time to time I will definitely use these filters because I really think that those enhance your overall images so if that made you curious about those filters then check out the link down in the description below so you can get yourself some Nisi filters. I've been using the quarter strength filter for most of these shoots and I think that was already a little on the strong side so if you don't like that big of a gloom effect then check out the 1 8 version. I think the 1 half version especially on a 50 millimeter prime lens is definitely over the top but again if you really want to go overboard and you want a lot of gloom in your pictures then check out the one half version as well as always i hope you really enjoyed this video and if you did give this video a thumbs up because it really helps the channel grow subscribe for more behind the scenes photography as well as filmmaking tips and i hope to see you on the next one that was cool again oh, that didn't work again